today, right, that we are starting is called Image Signal Processing. It, uh, that's the name of the course. Uh, and you know, I'm Raj Gopalan, right, I'm supposed to be taking this course for you. There will be, right, so as far as this course is concerned, right, it has a very strong lab component, okay, it has a strong lab component, which means that, which means that right, you will be actually required to, uh, to actually implement some of the things that I talk about here. What this was one thing, right, uh, to simply teach here, but then the other thing is that you go back and actually do this by yourself, right, implement the whole thing by yourself, that actually helps a lot, okay. So, books. Uh, A.K. Jain, this is a very old book, but actually, but I still like it, okay, some of the, uh, it's a very solid book, Fundamentals of a Digital Image Processing, Fundamentals of a Digital Image Processing, uh, all these are, all these are, the Indian editions are available, okay, so these are not, they're not expensive at all, but then I'm saying you don't need to purchase them, then there is a Gonzalez and Woods, and uh, this is again a good one, but then our sort of uh, course content, right, is going to be spread across. So, so it doesn't mean that uh, whatever I say is all there in this in these books and so on. It's just like I said, just if you want to have some kind of a mental comfort, uh, digital, what is that image processing, and uh, then there is a reference book, which is a good one. This you don't. Uh, don't even dare to buy this, it's too expensive. Al Bowick, The Essential Guide to you know, Image Processing. Essential Guide to Image Processing. So, one of the things that will happen is I will cover topics from, from various areas. Uh, topics from these papers, from uh, uh, different papers will be, will be covered. Topics from different papers will be covered okay, and uh, wherever I can, I will I'll actually tell you the paper so that, uh, you know, for those of you who are interested, you can go back, read the paper, right, just in case you want to know more, you can always read those papers, okay. And uh, yeah, so with that, yeah, that, that sort of sets the tone, okay. So now, if you ask yourself, right, why, why should I be doing, doing a course like this or, or what can this course do for me? Right at the, the you know, end of the semester, okay. If you have, if you claim that you have done this course in image signal processing, right? What does it mean for you in terms of what you can do? What uh, right? What it can actually do for you is that you will have, a, you know, you'll have a working knowledge of, of ISP. Okay, let me just shift to the next page. Okay, so so what will it do for you? So what will it uh, do for you? So. So the idea is that right, you will have a working knowledge, working knowledge in the, in the sense that right, you should be able to read a paper, implement things and so on. So that initial psychological barrier right, that let's say that students have that I mean, what is this paper and how do I implement and so on, after you kind of, after you are done this course, you should feel absolutely at home being able, you know, in being able to, uh, you know, having, a, in being able to having a working knowledge right. So have, you will have working knowledge. Uh, working knowledge uh, of ISP, ISP is, is uh, image processing okay, or IP, okay, not, uh, not intellectual property, IP along with a firm grounding the firm grounding in fundamentals of ISP. Okay, so, it is not just the just the implementation part, right? You also want to understand, right? So, in fundamentals of in fundamentals of again image processing. Okay. Now, the next thing, right? That you might ask is, uh, will this you know will this mean that I will know all about image processing? Will I? Will you know all about image processing? What do you think the answer is? Obviously, no. Right? No, but uh, you would have learnt enough, right? but you would have learnt enough learnt enough to be able to 
or confidently read and understand. So, you see, the idea is that, right, one, this is simply a basic course, right, of course, there, there are advanced, advanced these, uh, not these concepts and all that. But the whole idea is that, right, once you do this course, you should be, you should be able to go there, take a journal, some like transactions and image processing or transactions PAMI or something, or a CVPR level conference paper and be able to read it and feel that right, you do understand it, okay, that is, that is what it will give you. Okay, so it's impossible to cover the entire thing under, you know, this is a big umbrella. Right, image processing is a very, 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 very big umbrella. So it's impossible to cover all that is under that. Right, but then what we will do will give you enough expertise in order to be able to pick any paper of your liking and be I mean, in this area and be able to read and understand. Right, so confidently read papers and understand them. Because eventually, right, one should be able to read papers and all. I mean, that's why uh, that's why it's a it's a kind of an advanced elective. Right, it's not like a core. That's the whole idea. Uh, you know, behind an elective is that you should be able to understand and uh, read, you know, advanced papers, you know, papers and understand them. And understand them. Then also, the other thing, right, that I actually like to do is, you know, when I actually teach, I would also, I would also like to give you the interconnections. Okay, something you read somewhere, like for example, if you're doing, a, doing an SVD, right, then what kind of interconnections that it might have with respect, let's say, photometric stereo, or, or with respect to filtering, right, noise filtering, right, all those interconnections also, right, wherever, wherever appropriate, right, I'll try to explain so that, so that you know, you also understand the, understand the, uh, understand the importance of uh, why you're learning these things. And some of these things you'll also do, by the way, right, also you would have learned. Also, you would have learned many relevant topics. topics and their, you see, interconnects and their interconnects. Okay. Then going on to the next thing, right, which will be like, why study the subject, right? I mean, so what is this, what is the importance of the subject as of today? Mm. So, so in the first class, right, I always, always try to try to give people an idea as to where all, okay, it's being applied today because, you know, it's not true that all of you would have already, know, would already know probably where image processing gets applied and so on. But then, we, you know, these days, right, uh, with the kind of cell phone usage that I see around, I'm sure, you know, the camera is one of the things that is probably most used, right. So, I mean, I guess, but then if you think that it's only the camera that uh, this, the, whatever the sort of the consumer camera, that is what probably gets used the most, you know, image processing, that's where it gets used the most, that's not correct. Okay, so the, the idea is that, you know, things go beyond that. And of course, you know, many of those are important today because uh, if you can translate something onto a consumer camera, it makes a lot more sense because for the companies, right, it means, it means a huge thing, right? Something like a face finding, right? You no, know, it's been there for a long time now. Earlier and all, it was, it was, it was simply, uh, simply, you know, simply a theory that we would, but then just you know, took a few years for that to be you know, available on a phone and so on. Right? So, so similarly, any idea right, that you feel, you know, that these people feel you know, will get, you know, can get engineered and can be transported to a cell phone, right, means a lot okay, for these companies. So why study image processing? So right, you, you've heard about the say, top four guys, right? What are those big guys? Google, eh? uh, Google, what is Amazon, uh, Facebook, and uh, the fourth one you know, could be Microsoft, Intel, or whatever, right? So, so all these big guys, right? You know that, you know that, right? These are the people that, you know, which are actually making waves, right? In terms of in this area, right? And there is, I mean, image processing, by which I mean it shares a kind of a, you know, a blurred boundary with a computer vision, okay? Because the, the because because the sort of things that these people do, right, lies at somewhere the you know intersection of IP and CV. Okay, there is a computer vision, which is like a, which is like a high level thing, image processing, which is typically considered to be a low level thing. But then, you know, many of these, many of these vehicles that you use to do image processing, right, directly, directly feed into, into, you know, sort of a vision pipeline, right, which is why you find that Google, Amazon, Facebook, and all, right, they're, they're all actively doing this, and right? you have this, there's on you know, a shopping markets, right, where, where they feel that Amazon on the go or something, what is that called? Amazon go, I think, right, where you could simply walk into a shop and then you the shop around and then you say, come out. Right, nobody, you don't have to interact with anyone, right? So it just finds out what all you took, 
and and right and you know you're on your way out and and uh, facebook for example the tag and all that it does so very automatically right knows them and you know who it is actually looking at and so on so all these things we know that right there are these you know big guys that actually use all this and there are these cell phone companies right that want to that want to keep increasing the kinds of apps that they want to have on this on these phones and so on right so as far as, as far as we are concerned right now one thing okay which you should which you should realize is the all this all the kind of the blowing up right which has happened in the last 5 6 uh, maybe 10 years right that is all uh, that all has to do with uh, ml this machine learning deep learning and so on okay uh, so for those of you who have already done a deep learning course right some of this may, might look actually elementary elementary in the sense that you might wonder oh can i not implement the same thing now that i, you know, I have learned you know deep learning and therefore right why can't i simply use a user you know sort of a deep network to do the same job the answer is true but then the point is right deep networks should be invoked only when you when you really need them okay it's like saying that you know when there's a nice mathematical construct to a problem you would rather solve it in that manner rather than you know go you know hope for some black box right which you for which you will do some training and all that so the idea is that in fact right i always suggest that it's a good idea to first do this and then do a do you know a deep learning course but then in this institute we can't really enforce that so we get people that do deep learning and then they do uh, they do image processing so for such people right uh, they you know it could actually come into their minds as to uh, can i not you know could i not have could i not have done this with a simple deep network and so on that is all true but at the same time you have to you have to actually realize that uh, that you know a traditional way to way to actually examine image processing is still very nice and there are so many nice things right that uh, that i think you should be aware of a deep network can do whatever it can do but then there's already uh, already the uh, the kind of say physics right physics of image formation is so fundamental and that physics right you can't you can't really you know afford to not know and the idea is that people who have a background of deep learning as well as who have done a traditional image processing will be able to use a deep network much more effectively than somebody who simply uses the deep network without even having any knowledge about what the physics of image image formation is right so the whole idea behind this course is that we will not we will not go the go the deep learning way okay that's not the goal at all we will we will go go with the fundamentals of image processing and in the process the hope is that even if you've done a done a done something like deep learning you should actually be thinking about how do i bring all this say, physics into play okay now that i know say deep learning can i actually bring some of this physics into play in order to be maybe in order to maybe you know reduce my training or whatever right you know make things more say, efficient computationally whatever right reduce uh, you know reduce the number of variables that i the number of unknowns and i see uh, this one right deep network and so on okay so so in that sense this still uh, this still an say, essential component it doesn't mean that just because deep learning you know is a wave and all it doesn't mean that you know we need to we need to forget the past okay it's all the more important that we understand that we are firmly grounded in the in the fundamentals of image processing